this is Dr. Bill Cardoso from Creative Electrum. Today, our VP of Marketing, Dr. Glenn Thomas, is going to explore how to find defects in your SMT process log. Glenn? Essentially, defects are introduced in a couple different places, and there are actually three different places in the SMT process. Uh, we have paste application defects, we have component placement defects, and then we have reflow oven defects. All of those defects show up in the test uh, process. Uh, you can pass or fail the tests. Uh, if it passes, then you ship the product. If not, then it goes back to rework. And then the rework would essentially go back to test. So you have a closed loop system to monitor your process from the beginning to the end. And x-ray is an integral part of that. Uh, defects associated with solder paste applications, 80% uh, of your voiding and your issues are going to be with the solder paste application. Solder paste application is huge and it's one of those things that's mostly overlooked. Uh, if you blame, um, you know, a lot of people will look at a BGA and determine that we have excess solder, we have head and pillow, we have all kinds of issues with that. But most of those issues are actually from the solder paste application. And that paste application can be the um, masks or it can be actually the screen printing process or the solder paste itself. So we have quite a few defects that are associated with solder paste, so you're actually, uh, what we're looking at in the x-ray is to determine where those defects are. And we can look at the excessive solder, solder bridges, insignif uh, insufficient solder, all of those things can actually be attributed to solder paste applications. Uh, component defects, component def uh, placement defects are essentially uh, misalignment, polarity, and missing components. Uh, X-ray is not unique in its ability to be able to image these issues. Uh, most AOI systems will do a very decent job at this type of defect. So um, essentially the X-ray in this case just backs up your AOI. Uh, we can't look at, uh, we can look at polarity to a degree, but uh, misalignment we can definitely look at with X-ray. Missing components. Uh, AOI is perfect at that. Uh, one of the drawbacks of X-ray at this portion of the defect process or defect analysis is we uh, we can't see identification on the components and we can't really see the placement on the board as far as uh, you know uh, indicators or markings on the board so uh, AOI is actually a better uh, process for looking at this type of defect Uh, reflow oven defects are essentially uh, the uh, main reason most people buy an x-ray system. Uh, we can look for voiding, we can look at bridges, we can look at solder balls, excess solder, in insufficient solder. Uh, we can do all of the reflow oven defects as well as the solder paste defects. A lot of the defects you get in the reflow oven are really indicators of a problem in your solder paste application. Uh, voiding is almost impossible to get rid of. Uh, keep in mind that you will get excessive or more voiding in a, um, a lead-free solder than you will dealing with uh, leaded solder. Uh, also, what, another thing that um, a reflow oven deflect that's introduced into the system is uh, if you take your standard heat profile for a soldered component that's soldered on with lead, uh, you switch to lead free, uh, you really need to increase your temperature profile time a bit to get a little bit better um, melting you know, adhesion. Um, a lot of defects that you find with cold solder joints are all actually because the uh, profile is not long enough. You need just a few more seconds in the heat to actually create a solid bond. Uh, excess solder, that's pretty straightforward as well. Um, that one uh, is typically only a reflow of an issue if you get a lot of solder uh, or solder balls and you get a lot of uh, uh, a lot of excessive heat or if you your profile is too long you will get a lot of solder balls and you will get excessive solder. Uh, essentially you'll get solder migration. So you still have the same amount of solder, it's just not where it typically should be, and that creates the bridges and the insufficient solder issues. Uh, 
Uh, so essentially, uh, what we can do is we can collect data at the um, with the X-ray that ties back to the solder paste issues, to a degree parts placement, and to the reflow oven. We can look at that data that we're uh, amassing, and we can determine if you have a problem in the process and what general area in the process to look at. But we can also monitor that process to eliminate problems um, that become catastrophic. You can see your process vary to a degree. You can see that you're starting to get more voiding. Your percentage of voiding has crept up a few percent. Uh, you can see that you're, uh, you may have some alignment issues uh, that are starting to creep into the process. And with that uh, diligent monitoring of the test process, you can go back and you can make sure that you're not producing boards that are uh, have a possibility of a defect and possibility of future failure. Uh, in the future failure process, you can also go back and you can look at your data that you've collected in your test process, and you can uh, determine trends and shifts and uh, you know general overall integrity of the product. Uh, even after five years, if you store the information in the database, you can bring it up and you can look at X part with an X serial number, and you can look at five or 10 before or after inspections, and you can actually determine if you had a, a product shift or you had a quality shift during that time frame. Thanks, Kalan. If you'd like more information about this topic or anything else related to X-rays, please contact us at 760-752-1192 or uh, check us up online at creativeelectron.com. Thanks. <laughs>